Very good. Good? Yeah, it looks good. Looks good and I guarantee you it will taste even better. Really? Uh? Yes, you try. Don't take my word for it. Try it. In this episode of SG Now, we discover a coffee shop in Lengkok Baru that serves the community with unconditional love. City Joe Bruce buys a cup of coffee and helps refugees across Asia at the same time. City Joe Shahira finds out how green and eco-friendly food centre really is. And we meet Richard Tan, who went from destroyer to builder after 25 years in prison. Hello guys, as you can see, I'm hosting solo today. Unfortunately, my co-presenter is down with COVID, but don't worry, her symptoms are mild and she will be back before you know it. Now, as every Singaporean knows, coffee shops are popular places for people to meet, eat, drink, and talk about everything under the sun. The S17 Community Kitchen is not only a place for people to pick up a quick lunch, it also provides an important meeting point for the elderly and less fortunate. It's a place where they can go to get a hot meal and hang out with friends and neighbours. City Joe Bruce went along to meet the owner and serve some customers. Yo, what's up Singapore? Our island nation has always been strong on community relations. A while back, I discovered this community kitchen called S17, located at Lengkok Bahru. And they are a fine example of what community relations is all about, especially to our ageing population. Sitting quietly at the corner of Block 57, Lengkok Bahru, is S17 Community Kitchen. This is a coffee shop that was started not only to provide jobs for people living in the area, but also to supply up to 500 free meals every week to the elderly living in the neighbourhood. Hi, I'm Raymond Ku. I'm the founder of the S17 Community Kitchen here at Lingko Baru. What, what motivated me to, to start this is more of a meeting place for everybody and then for the elderly people to, to come here and redeem their, their meals. We've been providing 500 meals uh, a week, excluding bread and fresh food to them uh, every week. We've been here for 11 years. Beyond providing meals for free, residents can also approach the staff here for any administrative advice they might need. Many say it's a feeding program by providing 500 uh, uh, meals uh, a week, excluding the bread and fruits and everything else. But to us, it's a lot more. It's a lot more about reaching to the community and then what, what we do is that we talk a lot about unconditional love. So it's, it's about a community gathering place. Uh, in fact, so much so that we have become like their secretary. They bring in their water bills, asking why is it so high, electrical bills are so high. So we, we are like the company secretary. I am inspired by what Raymond has started with his community kitchen. And it is very heartwarming to see people coming down to both support and benefit from this initiative by buying meals. But the most important thing about a kitchen is that the food must be good to attract customers. And today I am joined by none other than my brother Chris. Did you know Chris? Yes, and he is here for the very first time to try out the food. Chris, wow, tell hey, me. It looks really good. Good? Yeah, it looks good. Looks good and I guarantee you, it will taste even better. Really? Uh? Yes, you try. Don't take my word for it. Try it. Wait, 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 wait. Before I try this, right, I want to know. Because I heard some stories about this S17 community kitchen. Why is it called a community kitchen? So the idea is, the staff works around here. Okay? okay. So the revenue from this kitchen, we're going to pay the rental the stuffing, and if there's any left over, mm -hmm. that money will go into feeding the poor and the elderly down here. Oh wow, hey, this, this is pretty incredible. Yeah. Hey, hi, hi. Hey, hi. Ah. 
This uncle I've seen many times also. He likes French fries. Right, uncle? <laughs> the food here. What's it best? Okay. Really? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try, 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 try a prawn. Uh, one prawn here. Oh my god, so fresh. Mm -hmm. Fresh, right? Wait, wait, wait. This is one go. Ooh. <laughs> Tucking, guys. Oh, man, the rendang is good. Really, really, really good. You can feel the lemongrass. Okay. Yeah. Virtual sharing. Um, you know, this is the first time I've been to a community kitchen. Because when you told me, right, say, hey, Chris, come on down to S17. I was thinking, what the hell is a community kitchen? Now I know, especially in this pandemic time, in this, this time of the pandemic, right? I mean, community is very, very important. Because we have to stay together to fight this pandemic. Yeah! To get through with it. Yeah! Ooh. Woo! Okay, I got some more of your fingers. I don't want to lose it. Every time I don't want to spoil it. Okay, guys. No more talking. Suit somebody up. Cheers, guys. Um. Not only do residents come down for good food, good company and advice, but over the years, many have also turned into volunteers to help others. Hi, Uncle. What about you? Do you come here every day? Oh, yes, I come here every day oh, because yeah. I'm a volunteer. Also. I'm oh. a volunteer. I'm a volunteer worker here. What do you do? Oh, I do. Uh, for example, this morning, uh, they need some small change. I go to change $100, $2 bills. And then they need some eggs. I, they, I go and they see, I purchase 90 eggs, 90 eggs. Okay, so the question is, they ask you to go because, you know why? Yes. He has his own car, I show you. Da -da -da. I know, I know. <laughs> so I look forward to everybody's support here at S17 Community Kitchen. Wow, that looks like a very popular place. The food looked really tasty too. And being waited on by Bruce, now that's a bonus. <laughs> Tasty food seems to be a bit of a theme for this episode. Our next story finds City Joe's Bruce and Chris visiting the Mad Roaster restaurant to try out a very special cup of coffee. Okay, to be exact, it's not the coffee that's special, although I'm sure it's very nice. It's the sticker that they place on the cup that's truly unique. Now, what's so special about this sticker? Let's go find out. I used to be a lawyer in Singapore and okay. then I moved to Thailand to become a lawyer for refugees with their legal case and I realised uh, after talking to a lot of them that actually they don't need help well they need, they need more help in their livelihoods, you know Singapore's Central Business District or CBD is filled with tall buildings and skyscrapers and smacked right in the middle of this is Amoy Street a busy street filled with shop houses that has been tagged as heritage buildings and nestled in between MND building and one of Singapore's oldest Tua Pei Kong temple is Amoy Street Food Centre. This food centre was built in 1983 and is filled with two floors full of food stalls. While walking among the stalls deciding what to eat, I discovered this food stall called Mat Roaster while looking at their menu. I saw that they serve chocolate babka, a bread that has dark chocolate swirls in laminated brioche served with custard and salted chocolate crumble. They also had a tamer version called cinnamon brioche, which has sugared cinnamon swirls in traditional brioche. But what caught my attention was the drink cups that was placed on top of their espresso machine. Each cup had a sticker of their logo, a rooster, which was differently coloured. I wanted to speak to the owner to find out more, but was told that she was at their new outlet at Deport Road. So off I went to look for her. Hey, thanks for coming. Hi, hi, hi. hi, hi. I'm Bruce, and you are? I'm Maddie. Um, I'm Maddie, I'm the founder of the shop, actually. You know, I, I've heard so much about mad roasters. Okay, Can thanks. you tell me more about it? Sure. Um, so, how it started is that um, I used to be a lawyer in Singapore and okay. then I moved to Thailand to become a lawyer for refugees with their legal case. 
And I realized uh, after talking to a lot of them that actually they don't need help. Well, they need, they need more help in their livelihoods, you know, having food on the table, roof over their head. And that means they need a way to earn money now. And their legal case is more of a secondary problem. So I came back to Singapore to start Matt Worcester to help them create livelihoods. Uh, and we do that through our cups. So each and every one of our cups has a different colored logo. Um, because it's all colored, hand colored by a refugee in Thailand. So we send them the stickers, they put in their artwork, and we pay them for their art. Um, we figured by selling a consumable that Singaporeans buy every day, sometimes twice a day, right? Um, and incorporating their art on the consumable, we can sell a lot more of their work. Um, and that's what we've been doing. Uh, we started one year ago at Amoy Street Food Center. We have one stall there, and now this is our second outlet at Depot Road. So how much uh, goes to the refugees for every cup of coffee that is bought? So every cup, 50 cents, goes to the refugee and we try to give them enough work to cover rent, right? So every refugee gets around 300 stickers to work on a month, which translates to roughly 3,000 baht. And that's rent in Thailand at least. Hey! Hey, sorry, sorry. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, 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 bye. After meeting Maddie, I made my way back down to Matt Rooster at Amoy Street Food Centre because I had an appointment with City Joe Chris. He, as usual, was fashionably late. As we ate our chocolate babka and cinnamon swirl and drank our ice latte and flat white, I told him about what Matt Rooster was all about and how it supported refugees by affording them a bit of income. We both agreed that what we ate was very good and the works that Matt Rooster was doing was awesome and that we would definitely come back here once again. So guys, if you are ever here at Amoy Street Food Centre, do come down here to support Matt Rooster because every cup that is sold, 50 cents will go to the refugee. Alright? So, this is Bruce. And this is Chris. Signing up. If you would like to find out more about Mad Roaster and their mission to help refugees in Asia, we have put a link in the description. Eco-friendly is a popular phrase these days, with many places claiming to be conscious of their effect on the environment. According to its website, Timber Plus Eastside at the Singapore Expo is a green and sustainable food park designed for communities to come together to eat, learn and play. It has been built to reduce carbon footprint and energy consumption. City Joe Shahira took a trip to the Expo recently to find out if timber really is greener than the average food center. The earth is dying. Yes, global warming is real, climate change is real, and I'm not trying to accelerate this process. One thing I notice is that Singapore food courts are not environmentally friendly at all. So today, I'm going to go on a mission to find out if food courts can be more eco-friendly. Okay, so now I'm on my way to this food park which claims to be green and sustainable. So I'm going to try to learn how they are doing their part to help save the earth. And I'm also going to take the bus because I'm trying to reduce my carbon footprint. So, I'll see you in a bit. Hi. Yes? How, how do you get out? Uh? How do I you get out? Up, you oh. want to go out? I want to go there. Yeah, you have to, because the front here all close. Uh. You have to go at the taxi stand there, uh -huh. by outside. Ah, okay, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> After a really long and hard and tough and difficult journey, we're finally here. So let's find out what is so green and eco-friendly about this place. The plants don't seem too alive to me. They're dying. Nobody's taking care of them. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so they actually encourage um, cyclists to come here, which is good. 
but there are no cyclists currently. So two major things that I've noticed so far in their efforts to help the environment. The first one being the gifted bag movement where they encourage you to recycle your tote bags for it to be reused. And also the one kind block where they encourage you to buy these blocks for you to farm and grow, and grow your own plants. Um, other than that, I think I'm going to go ask some of the store owners what are some of the things that they have done to help in these sustainable efforts. For the plants, right, do you use the plants that they grow over there? Um, I don't know. Eh. No. Uh, like, conserve as much energy as possible. Okay. Huh? Um, are you doing anything to help with saving the earth when you're preparing your food or serving the customers? Um, I don't know how, how to answer that. When I talked to the stall owners, some of them are unaware of the eco-friendly practices here. The one thing I notice is that there are tons of display lights all around the food park. Some stalls have as many as four TVs to display the menu. I ordered a drink and it came in a plastic cup with a plastic seal and individually wrapped plastic straws. The food I ordered at least came in a paper bag which is less harmful for the environment. So despite this place claiming to be eco-friendly, the hawkers themselves are not doing too much to actually also implement this eco-friendliness into their daily practices. And I think that there's still a long way to go for the food courts and the hawker centres in Singapore to be truly eco-friendly. This has been Siti Jo Shah. Let's try to reduce our carbon footprint and try to be more eco-friendly. Bye-bye. Hmm. Some good initiatives like the Gifted Bag program and One Kind Block, but it's a shame that many of the stores continue to use things like plastic cups and straws. Now, running an eco-friendly hawker business is challenging, and I think this food park is still a new idea that has got lots of potential. There's always some trial and error involved, but let's hope they reach their goals. Our next story focuses on one Richard Tan who rebuilt his life by building homes for others. Hey Singapore, we've just arrived in the private residential estate of Bredo Road and right in front of this beautiful house, I'm going to introduce to you the man behind this house. Not the owner, but the man who built it. Morning! This road is never easy, but we are living examples that it is definitely worth it. Let us hear from Richard how the events in his life, such as having his first child being born in a dark cell in a police lockup. Hi, my name is Richard Tan. I'm running a design and construction building firm and I build landed properties and do interior design. I spent a total of 24 years in prison. I was based in Malaysia and involved in major drug trafficking. I was caught and as a result, my son was born in the lockup. And this incident really makes me reflect on what I've done in my life. And it really makes me think that I need to change. It was during my last incarceration and my sister told me that it is the great love from Jesus Christ flowing through her to me that she didn't give up on me. This statement inspired me not to go back to the old way and create a new life instead. And that is the turning point of my life. The toughest challenge I faced was losing my young wife. She waited for me seven years. She raised up my son. She helped me to buy a foreign flat. After that, we thought that we can live happily ever after. Unfortunately, I lose her out to cervical cancer. I cry every day in the car, but I remember the promise I gave to my wife. I cannot go back to my old ways. I need to raise my son up to be a man of character, to be a man of integrity. And this is the promise that I made to my wife that made me to stay, continue to stay on course, to never go back to my old ways. COVID-19 really hits the company so hard 
that the company is going through a difficult time. And during the circuit breaker period, it is those times that I got all the time to seek God, to get close to God, to pray to God. And after this, I just feel that God just put me at the right place at the right time with the right people. And business started to crawl back. The happiest and proudest moment for me is my reconciliation with all my family members. My family, they see the change in me. They see the transformation in me. And they decided to trust me, believe in me, and I really thank God for that. Richard and I shared many similar experiences in the past. We were involved in gangs and drugs and had spent most of the prime years of our lives behind bars. However, it is never too late for us to make the decision to change. I hope God will continue to give me the strength and wisdom to be able to protect all my family members and to be a contributing member to the society and also to be able to reach out to those ex-offenders to help them reintegrate into the society. My advice to ex-offenders who are trying to start their new life again is to identify their own weaknesses. For me, my weakness is nightlife. So after my release for 15 years, I never put myself at risk. I never go to a single night spot before. So I would encourage all ex-offenders who want to start a new life, really put in effort to have self-discipline, to identify their own weakness. I'm sure at each one and every one of you can change. I wish what I do will let the society know that lots of ex-offenders are eager to change and deserve a second chance. From a major drug dealer who tears families apart by selling drugs to them, Richard Tan has now progressed to be a builder, a builder of beautiful homes. And this has been your City Joe Chris for Singapore One. 25 years in prison, the tragic loss of his wife, you know, many people might have given up under the strain of all that. Richard, you are truly inspirational. Well, that's our final story for this episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. And if you like what we do, please subscribe. It really helps us to continue telling the stories you want to hear. See you next time on SG Now. Bye!